God, so in, in high school, I had these people that took movement classes because I went to an art school. And so I'd see these people, like these kids, <laughs> so funny, like in like black leotards, like men and women, okay. just like walking around like this. Like, and that was their <laughs> class in high school. <laughs> so on to Peavy. Peavy. <laughs> From movement classes to PV. <laughs> movement to PV. I don't know why that was a good segue. They did have some movement. They did have some movement. From one country to another. How did, how did we get talking about this this morning? Because this was not on our radar. It was not about. on our radar. We have all these other videos we're talking about shooting, and then PV just sort of became the one today. Right. I think Derek willed it into existence for I, some reason. We went down the YouTube rabbit hole. And we, one then we do. watched that undercover boss. Yeah. And we were like, okay, this is really, this is odd. But, so we were talking about PV because... PV is the brand we all know and loved in the 90s. Yes. And in sort of in the 80s and 90s, it was like, that was the thing. Like, who didn't have a PV? Everyone had a PV. Uh, it, like I've said before, everyone I knew growing up had PV amps. I even I have, PV like, I have a PV Classic 30 still, like from, God, like, probably the year 2000, maybe it's a 99, but it's like, but we used it in my band, The Blondes, up in New York for the keyboard player. Yeah. Bill would play, like, his PV Classic 30, Jacked up, like he, then he just he carries keyboard out into the audience playing the classic thirty. Guys would like string the cables with them. It was great, great roadie crew. <laughs> I oh. sold my classic thirty in Nashville, probably eight years ago. But I had oh one until then. I mean, you had one too. You <laughs> could have yeah. been like matching classic thirty. Could have been like oh. classic thirty brothers. Opportunity it's, missed. It's on, but that those days are. We could have had them for our Skinner tribute band. We're gonna do. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. I was in a Skinner band in high school. Were you? Um, I was, it was like me. I was like 15. It was a much like 30-something year olds, which seemed like ancient old men to me. They fired me from the van eventually because I wasn't. Gods among men. I wasn't really cool. I was just an idiot that I didn't know really anything about Skinner. I just wanted to play. I was hoping you were gonna say it was like your fish band too, and you guys would just like you know change outfits and then you were Skinner and no, then you were fish. Totally different thing. And then was, you were Skinner. God, that'd be awesome. That's a great idea. It, it is a great idea. Uh, so if anyone wants to take that, it's yours. Anyway, so PB, we all had them. Every church had them, every, every club. Every PA, every like kids band, you know, teenage band, that's your PA system. And like to me, because I'm old now, it seems like just overnight they just went away. Yeah. And, but it wasn't an overnight thing. It was a very slow, steady bleed. Right. To where PV just disappeared. And, um, and you know, you go back to the icons of Skinner having those great PV sounds, which... Is yeah, amazing. I mean, in some circles, that PV mace is still sort of like a mythical yes. amp, you know, to get those, those. I mean, there's some debate about what was used when and blah, blah, blah. But well, like yeah. we all had like the PV amps like back because it was the amp you could get when you couldn't afford a Fender. Right. You know, like you're, you're, you're entering the tube world yep. and you want to get the affordable tube. And this is before, the, today is like a glory day of tube amps. You oh, man, they're everywhere. Right. Affordable tube amps now. That was not a thing in the 90s. They were just available. They were like everywhere. You know, I just, I, I could... Get my hands on PV. Guitar Center, Sam Ash, all the, yeah, pawn shop. Mine came from a pawn you know, shop. <laughs> you know, the bowling alley would have PVs in the back sometimes. They're like, you'd win yeah. them with the tickets. It's, um, they were everywhere. Then, you know, we, we watched that Undercover Boss. We watched a few other videos. We read a little bit. Not much. We just read yeah. a little bit. And it's, it's, it's this very sad tale of just a slow death. So they were in Mississippi? Yeah, I mean... I think at one point they had lots of factories spread around Mississippi, Alabama, and then they all sort of condensed to Meridian, Mississippi. Because there was like seven f hubs. I, I believe that is true. I think something like that was like massive. It was a massive production because they made everything. Like everything. Said. Like they, and it was it was American built, which is pretty amazing for it that is cool. price. And um, and, and I wonder how many people realize that that you know a lot of that old PV stuff was all made in the USA. I think most people do not. Yeah. I think we're gonna have some fans out there like I always knew that, which is awesome. I hope you did because I didn't know that. I, I sure did not know. I, 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 I just, you know, yeah, I wasn't aware of it the way I am now. Well, and, that, and that's sort of the catch twenty two, and that's sort of part of what was maybe the demise of TV. And like, right. you know, it's it, everything started moving overseas. Um, you know, all the other companies sort of got onto that sort of from from Fender to the new companies coming in. Right. You know, even PRS, we talk about their whole SE line yep. is built over in the Asia, the Asian areas. I was going to say like the Pacific Rim because I, I love that movie. <laughs> and if you haven't seen Pacific Rim, go watch it. Not the second one. That's trash. But the first one, it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots with a $200 million budget. Yes. It's one of the greatest things ever made. It's Guillermo del Toro directed it too from Pan's Labyrinth. There you go. To, or he produced it. I don't know if he did Whatever. He did something. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, imagine if you had giant robots firing PV amps. 
that was there that were you know or like or like you know take the Mad Max the good one with Charlie Theron that came out like yeah. in in Tom Hardy I, yeah it's sure. um whatever. amazing with the guy playing the guitar in the those front giant wall PVs it, wall whatever and it's like I imagine those as PVs because that's what would survive the apocalypse yeah you're right sorry we got distracted okay. sorry the move sorry. to overseas and the the sort of Pacific Rim building of guitars yep. So PV was kind of late to that game. I think they sort of stuck around thinking that we're going to stay American built. Sure. And which is we applaud that. No, it's great. It's, it's but awesome. unfortunately, it happened at a time when I don't know if people cared as much. You know, and I think they they and, it, and so all these other companies started doing that, and they were getting their product prices down. Right. Where PVs were still higher, but they they weren't perceived as getting a value for it. Right. Well, then we heard the. The guy say on Undercover Boss that <laughs> people don't care if things are made in America. They just, you know. <laughs> the fact that Undercover Boss was just referenced that as like is a, our, is our source. <laughs> there was a time when I watched Undercover Boss because it was, it was always so heartwarming. I, it, it, Most I, of them. This one, maybe not as much. I kind of always like the one where they kind of catch an employee being an idiot. Well, yeah, but it was always like they kept, the formula was catch the employee being the idiot, but then there's like this heartwarming like single mother that they like give stuff to and like pay for. Or like it the, the pizza one's funny where like the, the woman is shocked when she finds out, like or her drivers are smoking weed. She's like, no, pizza <laughs> delivery people it's, smoking weed. Oh my lord, that's the reason you get that job is so you can smoke weed at work. It's it's unbelievable. Anyway, so don't even act like you were shocked there when your pizza guy shows up and he doesn't know what the right address is. But I feel like there are going to be comments about guitar store employees. <laughs> Maybe comparable position. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we did a whole video on how you like how to work at a guitar shop. It's more like how you end up at a guitar right. shop. It's how you land. How you accidentally become. Don't yeah. finish high school, gooder. <laughs> um, but anyway, back so. <laughs> The, but then the problem is then PRS, I mean, not PRS, I'm sorry. We were talking about them and they go, PV. PV starts, um, they do start moving their stuff overseas. Yeah. And like, then it, they do it at the wrong time. Everything, the timing was just horrible and everything with PV, I think. It seemed like it was very reactionary and not like a strategic, hey, we're going to have these overseas lines and we're going to make this stuff in the USA. You know, because the, the brands that we all love that we're talking about that did really well. You know, they've got their overseas stuff, and then they've got their American stuff. Yeah, so Fender Squire, the yeah. Fender Mexican amps are all right. built in Mexico. Um, the, the amps line, tube amps, except for the custom shop ones. Right. Gibson has their Epiphone lines. Yep. It's it, it's tricky. So it it, it was. Yeah, PV made a, some strategic mistakes, but also their whole, like, their chain of command and how they seem to talk to their employees wasn't really ex existent. It seemed like as like as the company was diminishing, there was no communication on what was happening if there was a grand strategic goal. Right. And like yeah. they were just seeing a hemorrhaging of humans and people leaving. Cut backs. We're only working four days a week. Oh, you don't get extra week of vacation. You know. Benefits Sorry. are disappearing. Right. And uh, in, in a job like that, like you go to Martin or something, and they, these are generations of people that have worked there. There's yeah. a grandmother, a mother, and a granddaughter all working there at the same time. And it's I, amazing. When you meet those people. There's this sense of pride, yes. about it, and and then for for some of the you know places we've been, like this excitement to be part of this thing, and I, I think that's well, I mean that that's like well because at Martin there is this this weird sense of pride which is amazing because like you're building Martins, yeah, you're building Martin guitars. These are guitars that are built, they're purchased, and they last lifetimes. They're air, they they're literally air become guitars. heirlooms, yeah. You know, so. at Taylor Guitars, people are just like young and vibrant and excited, they're innovating, and they're on and, the cutting edge. And Pierre, it's a industry. lot of young people, yeah. and a very attractive young woman that puts guitar tops together was there. Um, that everyone commented on our video about, but no, but the the young staff at PRS was exciting to see too. Like there was dudes like sitting there standing for like eight hours standing, and they they didn't seem to hate that. Well, I think they, you know? in their brain, they're like, we make the best guitars in the world. That's, and I, that's and how the, they And feel. that comes from the top down. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, Paul's a nut, and that's sort of, it is. He's <laughs> In the best he's, way. He's this nutty genius, and he's inspirational. He's cast Bad down science. there. Yeah. Um, or maybe scares them to death. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. work there. Um, Did anyone, like, blink at you in Morse code when you were there? A few people. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so who knows? <laughs> they're in the inlay <laughs> section. It's very stressful there. <laughs> The pickup wine no. guy seemed he like he was really relaxed. He was cool. He was just he was just getting hit some buttons and be chilling out and like working with these ladies dipping stuff in this magic sauce, which was totally baffling to me. It was like the I can't get into the secret sauce of what so they do there. Now. It was it was and weird. Like, it was it's unbelievable. But then and then you go to Fender too, and like everybody's just having like the Fender Custom Shop in particular. Man, yeah. like people are just having a good time there. Like they're building like the best guitars and having a blast and like listening to music in their own little workstations and it's just like when I worked at Gibbs. 
It wasn't that way. But Gibson's better now, maybe. <laughs> I, Knock on wood. I don't know. We, 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 I think so. We think so. We've heard mixed <laughs> reviews so, so far. I'm sure it's going up. Yeah. No, but it's um, but that that wasn't happening at PV, and there was zero communication. It was just a. It was when something's dying. Yeah. And you're not communicating. You can't hide that. Everyone knows. Right. It's dying and. And you know, like Derek brought up like a weird point too, which I don't know if this has something to do with, but like the location of where the main factories, we don't know if that was a pro or a con. Like, because like most of the companies that are doing really well, the manufacturing bases for music, are strangely based in the West Coast or the Northeast right now. You know, it's Gr- true. Gretsch had that same disaster when they moved their factories down to uh, Arkansas. It's true. Um, and those are the worst Gretsches ever made. Um, because it went from it yeah. went from like it went from like you know, this was the case of a company like with the very skilled craftsmen in Brooklyn and right. craftswomen building the guitars for generations again, and they're like, okay, we're gonna move it to Arkansas because it's cheaper. That's when Baldwin had the company, and and they move it down there, and like these guys have never built a guitar, and they you know, sure. give them manufacture good luck. You know, it's the same as building the table, isn't it? And I mean, I, I really think, you know, part of that is just unfortunate. Like we're moving this here, and our motives are cheaper, you know, not, not let's take pride and train people to really do this well and be craftsmen and, you know, put out the best thing. No, because we're clearly Southern supporters because we're in the South. Surprise, if you don't know where we are, we're in North Carolina, which is, I think, the South still. I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. It's, Last I checked. You never know. It's like a changing barometer in this strange country <laughs> yeah. of ours. I'm, I'm emigrating to Ireland soon. Right. They've allowed me to have, like, dual citizenship just in Newry. That's it. It's a little place on the border of Northern Republic. That's all. But um, as long as I get to come hang out and drink beer, they do have wonderful beer there. They have great beer and yeah. wonderful people. The nicest people. Um, anyway, I'll continue. I digress. But um, no, we think because yeah, you look at some of Gibson's greatest works. Obviously, in the Memphis and the Nashville in factories, Nashville, yeah, they've had like their glory years there as well. And so like, the South can crush it. It's just f- from all the research we've seen, the heart was missing in PV too. There's something happened uh, that, well it's i just think morale was really low and like, like we talked about the other companies who have flourished where the the employees seem to be excited and they feel a part of this thing i think those employees just felt squeezed out like maybe they wanted to be a part and they were they were getting they were like a barrier from being a part so when it was all said and done the part that like as much as we all loved in the played our pvs like the company kind of did everybody wrong there. They they really screwed those folks. So, and, I mean, according to Undercover Boss, if Undercover Boss is well, I mean, I, I don't know how, I don't know how wrong it could be because like they they pay to be on Undercover Boss right? too. Like they, these companies pay like a million dollars. It's to marketing. Be, yes, it's a marketing ploy for their thing. But after after Undercover Boss, when they make all the promises, they make they're going to pay for this girl's education. She's going to get an extra week vacation built in. They're going to give this other guy like ten thousand dollars, and he turns down a better paying job that he has lined up to stay with them. Forty five days later, bam, they close that plant. Those people are all fired. And it sounds like he didn't even come and tell them. He just had the HR guy say, "Hey, hey, by the way, sixty days in your job." No, it doesn't sound yeah. like that. That is exactly what happened. Because I mean, nobody wants to do that, but that's sure, part of the but, hard price right. of being boss. I think right. is um. God, I mean, that's what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> it's like I'm so, you know, as much as like we're rooting for like you know the the glory years of PV to come back, like we'd like it to come back under different people, maybe. And people, you know, and like the, I, the, the same way, like these other companies have sort of resurfaced yeah. from decades ago. I think the people who ran PV to the ground, kind of like the guy, you know, that, that Henry guy, Gibson, he, he did great for a bit, then he did terribly, right. and he's gone. And, and I think uh, Gibson is perfect. We do. Now. I like the new team there. It seems like they're improving. They have JC, seems like he knows what he's doing. Yeah. And and like, when, yeah. I mean, when we talk to people like Fender, PRS, Martin, Taylor, they love working there. Fender's so happy because like, they got They're the right. So they got the right CEO. They're like, Woo. <laughs> yeah. you never know when you're picking a seat. Like, right. oh god, thank God, this guy's cool and he's done really so. good. He's everyone's making more money. But yeah, PV they did some guys wrong there, and so that was sort of a the negative part of the follow up. So yeah, bummer there. I'm gonna give that a thumbs down Two or a, thumbs down because I mean a green pick or a turtle. I think that really kind of screwed and impacted that whole town. It, oh, it does when I a mean, factory, you know, when it's place that family. Yeah, so. I mean, PV sort of always positions itself not as an A level, right? You know, and then as the other as these other newer companies came in yep. 
and sort of could build the same level as PV for a lower cost. Sure. It sort of started squeezing them out a bit. The overseas transition really didn't affect it in a good way. They did it at the wrong time. And it's just the marquee of that line. You know, we see a lot of other companies that don't have that, that, that you know, that Fender, Gibson, PRS, Taylor, Martin marquee that just, and those are the big boys. Sure. All the, they can play at this different level and they have these marketing budgets that are insane. You know, as PV had a big marketing budget for a bit, but they didn't have the product eventually. It's just their product just died up. Yeah. I think it's just because these other companies I mentioned, you know, they have their historical legacy, which is huge for all of them, but they also have NPIs, new product introduction, inventory all every year. Right. Yeah. You know, every quarter. And all the time. <laughs> you know, constantly. That's like if, you've, if anybody's tracking Fender at all, like you'll notice like ever since, you know, their, their present CEO took over, there's been like a constant influx of new product and new things coming out. And it, it, it breeds excitement. It does. Like we were just laughing about like the Her guitar. Like that, ever since the Super Bowl, that thing is blown up on reverb searches. So like, Do you have a Her guitar? People are calling. Like, who would have thought? Like, you know, Fender did. You know, and we we actually said when we were talking about the the uh, newest Silver Sky release about PRS, you know, putting out that one special run a year. But and I know we said then maybe maybe the, I mean so maybe we were a little wrong on that. Maybe Fender Don't knows exactly what they're doing. Ever say those I'm words sorry. again? Sorry. Edit that out, Derek. Scrub it. But it's almost like Fender knew that it's almost her like, was going to play the Super Bowl too, and <laughs> this was going to drive sales. And hmm. it's almost like the heads of Fender know more than we do. Are smarter than I'm us. I'm not going to go down that road, but it's a, it's an idea. It's a cute idea. It's like saying like Labyrinth would have been okay without David Bowie in it. We all know that's not true. Um, that was a that was a proper analogy, right? Yeah, totally. No, so I'm. Um, yeah, we do want to hear all your stories with P because it's it's a brand like it, this was a sad thing. We we watched the whole undercover thing and like, it's sort of sad to watch because like we all grew up with P V. Like and it's just weird to see like a brand just die. And like could it come back hard? It's still there kind of. I, maybe you guys are saying you guys are crazy. Like I'm buying new P V stuff and I love it and it's crushing. Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear that. Maybe we are unaware. Well, I mean, we've done a little bit of research, you know, we live in this market, so that's not necessarily happening. It's like, I said maybe. no, but no, I, it's like brands come back, like D'Angelico came totally back. They totally could make a comeback. And that was bought by the guy that did an Arizona iced tea. Like, he's like, I'm going to make this thing. Supro came back. I would love to see PV make a comeback. And like, PV Custom Shop. Joe Bonamassa should buy PV. No, he needed to buy Gibson, but he missed that boat. And that was... <laughs> I'm just saying, he could go buy PV. That's a whole other video we could talk about, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yeah, so let us know about your PV adventures, your PV experiences, and your PV love and your PV hate. I hated the part how the tubes always got knocked out of the back of the Classic 30 because it wasn't protected. It had these little silver things. It might just so rattly, even with the little yeah, things. Yeah, I love the way it sounded. It was good. And you could, you could touch this when you learn to touch tubes, and they're really hot, and it burns your fingers. It's true. PV amps. Happens. Definitely not child safe. But um, fun. That's all. <laughs> PV, hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell so you don't miss videos in the future. Thanks, as always, for hanging out with us. I don't know what this was. I was like, I don't know what that means. I was going to do that.